This is a normal Factorio world. This is a death world. Factorio is a terror. Amazing game, is what I meant to say. Prepare yourself for a social experience with lot None of your friends. None of uh. your friends. There's nothing like feeling your days are numbered, and I crave a gaming experience that's difficult. I think that the most engaging and worthwhile things in life, after all, are difficult activities. So I'm trying out a death world. Comfort isn't worthwhile, but there's joy in overcoming difficult situations. And single player games are fun too. Gaming is about anti-social guys sitting in front of a computer in a room being alone. So for a difficult single player experience, the wave survival will be difficult, and the days will be numbered. Will we survive? World, world setting. setting. I raised the world resource count so that it would be possible to play, and there's the seed. If you want to follow along, I figure that might be something I would want to try. Gameplay. Game okay, so day one, I'm going to be keeping the day count on the side, whatever you think of that. I'm actually a big fan of all of these wave survival types of challenges. Although most of them are done with Minecraft, I really think that Factorio Deserve was one unto itself. The first couple days are mostly about economy of movement and actions. I don't want to give you the, the wrong impression, I did play this scenario several times, and I failed many when I was trying to get this to work. Uh, like I said, economy of movement and uh, selectiveness about actions. You really need to be careful about what you do and don't do with your time in the first couple of days. That's all to say that certain tasks you complete are essential, absolutely essential to complete, and if you don't do some of these basic actions in the first day, it's all over. There's not really any catching up. So I set out one of each of the basic resource collectors, smelters. Really not a good way to start a factory. You know, I, I want to add on, um, by the honor system in this challenge, if my character dies, it's all over. That's why I filmed several takes of this, failing the first few times. I was tired of playing games that felt like they lacked a sense of tension because I knew them too well, and I really wanted a change of pace for this challenge. I know only the very basic systems and ideas of Factorio, so you're bound to spot a lot of flaws in my setup here on the first couple of days. I guarantee if you're good at the game, you won't learn much from this playthrough. But I'm not really designing this factory for efficiency, but with urgency of defense in mind. It's subtle, and it can definitely creep up on you, but I have to say that the alien evolution, the enemies you're fighting, scales very slowly and gradually in Factorio. And it speaks to what a well-balanced game it is, that it doesn't really feel static at any time. The enemy presence feels dynamic and changing. It adapts to you and feels you out. Despite the fact that you sometimes feel like you've perfected your defenses and you're ready for a life of comfort, you haven't really ever fully automated all of your defenses. They always keep creeping back up. As I mentioned, the goal of Factorio at times appears to be living a life of comfort. One of total automation, like I said before. But anybody who's seen the aliens evolve in this difficulty knows that you need to keep adapting and evolving your own defense to match theirs. Right when you think you've figured it all out, yet another attack, larger and more fearsome than the first one, unexpected, comes out and is unleashed upon your walls. Thus, I spent the first four or so days in the death world frantically preparing my defenses and some basic production. It was all winding, but I was near the end there. The goal was to create a small defensive grid around me and power everything by hand with the use of belts, but it would be a while until I got up to that. I tried not to watch too many other YouTubers complete this challenge, as I find that the most enjoyment lay in discovery. The original idea came from something I'd seen in an old Markiplier video on a death world a sensible structure would be to fortify the outer perimeter, not by building a complete wall at first, that would be too time and resource consuming, and it wouldn't scale well. No, eventually we'd work our way up to that, but I had to start with a robust four-cornered defense. One turret at the center, and four walled groups of three or four turrets along the outside. Cliffs would substitute in well, too. Symmetry and balance. This structure would provide all the support needed to construct all the basics of my factory's production. Once I had those resources in hand, then we could start to build outward and expand. Thus, I survived my first week of attacks. Yes, it was repetitive at first, but the attacks themselves were relentless. Eventually, my turrets triumphed over the first ones. 
Some of the most enjoyable games are the most difficult and intractable, and it led to a whole different set of satisfactions than most new Factorio players experience. Like rediscovering the entire game all over again. Having completed all of these actions freed me up for my larger plan for the base. I could create a more conservative structure, but ultimately I decided to complete research on logistics and belts. These freed me up from many of my menial tasks. At the beginning, you play as the sole builder, then suddenly you're a warrior, you go back to being a builder, and then you're a repair and maintenance man. Usually, carrying and crafting resources by hand is just a chore, and there's not such a massive threat present. But this time, it was more of a balancing act. If you let one ball fall, then the entire act was over. Automating was no longer a matter of convenience, but one of life or death, and I needed to figure out not only the most efficient way to complete my tasks, but perhaps more urgently and importantly, the fastest way to accomplish them. As the days went by, the hordes were growing larger and larger and more and more frequent, and I needed to find more ways of leveraging my powers to fight more and more biters as they rushed upon the wall in seemingly unfathomable numbers. Ultimately, my eyes were set on creating a completely automated defensive structure. After all, Factorio is about automation, automate everything, although the beginning of this challenge forsakes that notion. Even automate the automation itself if you can. So my defenses would have to be foolproof, even if I weren't around to refuel the turrets. Thus, I started constructing an outer perimeter wall. I couldn't be present for all of the attacks, certainly, so I'd need to put a turret on the wall anywhere there might be an attack, and line up several of them side by side to support one another. In addition, I'd need a set of conveyor belts circling the perimeter to deliver the bullets and ammo to my turrets. But this was all still a ways away. At the moment, I had enough defense to think about. And more and more, I realized I was wrapped up in my own head and thoughts. When I play video games with clearly defined goals like Factorio, here it was wave survival, it feels to me like a microcosm of real-life planning. I definitely have a tendency, I realized throughout this, to get lost in goal setting and thinking about the top of the mountain before the actual obstacles that lay in my path. So too, when you play a death world in Factorio, you too will encounter the merits and flaws of your own planning and your hunter-gatherer brain. But I tried to make everything as well-planned as possible and space everything out accordingly. Although it is an opportunity for every new place tile, it's also sealing your coffin if it doesn't go well, and it takes twice as long to set it back up. I completed a smelting setup, which gave me great pride at one point. But I couldn't afford to not be busy. In Factorio especially, idleness is the devil's workshop, and there's nothing more ominous than the silence of a death world. Almost like staring at a chessboard, thinking only one turn ahead, knowing that your opponent is many, many steps ahead of you. Ultimately, my aim was to keep moving in a westerly direction with ovens and so on, as you can see. There's something marvelous about the moment when your resources finally start to accomplish your goals of automation, when you stop having to complete so many tasks by hand. And I was finally ready to automate all of the ammo production, and sooner than I thought I would. For me, this was a moment of great pride in my creation to have fashioned my own mechanical hive in response to the organic, alien one I was up against. For the mind, when paired with metal tools in the fire of industry, is a hive unto itself with only one limitation. Although I could set many pieces into motion, I could do only one thing at a time. You can think about only one thing at a time, just try it. Again, this shares its parallels with the limits of real life thinking and planning, how to best spend the unforgiving minute with productive activity. If you plan your time wisely when you're young, you can set into motion an array of passive tools at your disposal when you're old. But if you don't, you can't. In this case, it was turrets. If I made enough of them, I wouldn't have to worry about defenses later on. This wasn't a complete factory by any means, but I had, at long last, upgraded my present station and lodging in life such that I needed now function only as a repair and maintenance man, like I said before. 
My main objective was somewhat accomplished, and I took pride in the fact that I had finally gotten past the stage of the death world, where my life lay in peril, and it was uncertain if the biters would rip away everything from my cold, dead hands. That's all to say, I could finally play Factorio the way you're supposed to play it, or at least as I had envisioned. After all, my three main objectives in starting the challenge were 1. Survive to the point where I could establish electric power 2. Automated turret ammo delivery and 3. Which I was beginning now Beginning on the construction of a main bus on which to spearhead my push into the biter base and begin my expansion eastward I had accomplished goals 1 and 2 and now only that third one lay ahead and it was time to expand eastward despite the fact that the west was really where more of the threats were coming from. But I still found myself laden with copious amounts of resources I just didn't need, like walls, and more turrets and ammo were highly in demand. Like I said, laying down new factory presents both an opportunity and a risk, and the biggest risk to take is wasting your own time and having to backtrack and babysit all of your old constructions you had originally hoped to automate from the beginning. In this way, assets can very quickly turn into liabilities because of small mistakes, and it becomes more and more costly if you fail to correct those minor mistakes later on. Think of it like mistakes you might worry about when raising your child, for example, or choosing the right career, or where to live, or who to marry. Make small mistakes early on, and later on they'll add up, and minutes of failed forward planning can lead to hours upon hours, or in-game days of corrective action. But when you're caught up in the thick of it, you don't even know what's right around the corner, waiting for you to make one mistake. The enemy is an entropic force that envelops your defenses, and washes upon them like the tide of time itself. But all that's to say I was in a fairly comfortable position to make these observations, I had automated practically everything, established my main bus, and I was finally automating research in bulk. This wasn't a major accomplishment by any stretch of the normal player's imagination, but a massive one for a death world, and in particular for me. I had made it almost an entire in-game month, and of all the branching windows of opportunity that had led me to this, this one was a full-blown military state. I was in a bubble and I felt safe. Finally, everything seemed eerily persistent, and I even began automating the creation of the belts themselves. Soon, I would be on to automation of the assemblers, too. A massive opportunity to exponentially increase my factory's output. Yes, industry was on the rise. My position would change from that of a builder to that of an architect. And now I was preparing to lay out a sprawling infrastructure and new designs rather than simple buildings. The attacks seemed predictable, but then they began to evolve. The threat of which I had availed myself with this five layer thick wall was finally knocking on the weakest points in my defenses, but in some ways, 30 days of constant short term survival availed me of my longer term judgment. Um. I had developed nearsightedness, and I couldn't see the ever looming, ever evolving threat, so I had to act fast, and become a warrior again while we pushed eastward. Unfortunately, the geometries of how I had established ammo delivery weren't scalable, and any time I wanted to build a broad, new wall against the hives, it necessitated a complete rebuilding and a new branching of the ammunition belt, making supplies grow ever more sparse as I went. I was finally researching more efficient assemblers and even landfills to get away from the land bridge that had limited me from the start, but I had my hands tied, and I was playing the waiting game. Now, it came down to a matchup of attrition. Could the eastern defenses I had established early on last long enough for me to expand the main bust directly into the western hive? This would mean a major confrontation. Occasionally, raids might make it through, but I thought that was the exception rather than the rule in the back of my mind. Ultimately, I think it came down to the spitters. Your enemy evolves invisibly and quietly, and it's one of the most special things about Factorio that makes it one of my favorite games, and one of the most well-balanced, exciting, and challenging in the automation genre. Factorio is hard, and it's a lot of fun, 
Losing is even more fun when your enemy makes you think and change something about yourself to improve for the next time. I spent the last day in my sad life on Earth dumbfounded at what I had done wrong, but feeling simply outmatched. Not cheated, not a victim of some spammy game mechanic, but clearly outnumbered, outdone, and thoroughly defeated. Still, as my base was being destroyed and everything I had worked for taken from me, I was having fun. I found myself having even more fun imagining all of the things I could do differently next time, and genuinely excited to start laying down belts and new plans. It made me think more about life and planning, it gave me a break from real life, and this is why we have games in the first place. Will I try it again? Yep. Will I do it differently next time? Find out and see.